We're in Bogota, Colombia. In this video, we'll take you on a journey through the city's most iconic landmarks, from stunning views of Monserrate to immersing ourselves into the vibrant local market, we'll experience the true essence of Colombian culture. Get ready to savor delicious Colombian food, explore fascinating museums, and discover hidden gems like a church nestled underground in a salt mine. Our drone will also capture stunning aerial views as we navigate this enchanting city and surrounding area in Colombia. My name is Chris Lauder, and if you're new here, we create travel content from our adventures around the globe. Welcome back, returning viewers. But before we reach our cozy hotel in Zona T, one of Bogota's best neighborhoods, we'll share a behind the scenes look at a minor mishap at the airport. Well, let me tell you about it. Well, we're attempting to go to Bogota and they bumped us. Well, they bumped me only, not Leslie. And uh, they've oversold the flight by five people. So now we're going to the gate with one of the Latam workers and they're gonna see if they can get volunteers to voluntarily cancel their flight, we'll see. Here we are in Bogota, you wouldn't believe, but uh, we finally boarded our flight. They had five people on standby, so we were really fortunate to be able to get on the flight. Um, but we have arrived to Hotel Cabrera here in Bogota, Colombia. So we're gonna be here for a few days and uh, we're hoping you'll come along for the journey with us. Just checked into the hotel and uh, we're stepping inside our room, so I'll let you see what our room looks like. Really nice room. Here we are, we have Really, it's almost like a mini apartment. Leslie's drinking her Coca tea because we are at a high elevation. Almost a full-size refrigerator, or you could call it that. We got a, even a burner, microwave, and uh, a bunch of appliances. We got a little sitting area here. I'm guessing that the TV on the other side actually flips around. It looks like it does. Uh, it wasn't the cheapest room they offered, but it was you know, relatively uh, a good price. So we have the sleeping quarters, the TV, and we'll check out the view in just a second. But overall, uh, I would say it's a nice room and uh, definitely happy with it. We'll have a range of accommodations on this very long trip. I'm gonna be traveling for about two months and Leslie for about six. That's our room. And this is gonna begin our three days here. We are hydrating up from our long trip and the altitude. But uh, yeah, we hope you'll enjoy this video with us. So we are here in Zona T in uh, Bogota, and today we're going to do a city tour. Uh, Les, where are we going today? A eh, pequeño city tour eh, por la ciudad de Bogotá, que incluye eh, Montserrat, incluye el Museo del Dorado, y no sé, no recuerdo cuál otro lugar es. <laughs> All right, we'll come along for the ride. So as is necessary sometimes, you got to be a little flexible. Uh, there's a lot of last minute changes, things that are unexpected like yesterday being uh, bumped from my flight. Fortunately, I was able to get on. However, uh, yeah, we gotta be flexible. Right now, uh, we had requested a, a guide, a guia in, in English, and uh, he doesn't speak English. And I need to, to have English for you guys. So um, we're checking with them to see what they can do. Otherwise, we might have to roll with a, a Spanish speaker, which uh, we can just add subtitles. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, sometimes you gotta be flexible. So the thing about uh, traveling, you know, you gotta adapt to changes that happen. It happens quite frequently. <laughs> so I will talk just a minute about the, the hotel while we're waiting here. Um, hotel is fantastic. Our room is great, as you already saw. Great service so far. Is it just the hotel? Well, we're, we're about to find out. We're gonna explore a little bit more of Bogota. Okay, Les, so what's the scoop? Uh, vamos a ir a Montserrat, y ahí nos va a esperar el guía que habla inglés, y desde ahí vamos a iniciar el tour, el pequeño circuito a Bogota. <laughs> okay, well, as, as you heard, uh, we're gonna have a, a tour. The first part will be in Spanish and the second part will be in English. All right, so uh, Leslie and our guide, our, our guía. Hey, disculpa, ¿cuál es tu nombre? Santiago. Santiago. Leslie and Santiago are gonna take over the first part of the video. Okay, empezamos. <laughs> vale, no. Pues nada más eh, para iniciar, eh, mencionarles, no sé si alcanzan a apreciar que Bogotá está, es muy naranja, ¿no? Tiene mucho ladrillo sí. por todas partes. <laughs> Eso se debe a que pues, Colombia es la mayor reserva de pigmento de color rojo en el mundo. Esta parte de acá es la zona T, una de las zonas de pronto más cotizadas en términos económicos en Bogotá. Y hay algunas casas que son estilo inglés y francés, porque la no, digamos que la clase alta de Bogotá de los 50 a los 70 querían imitar pues, la nobleza y la, 
la clase alta de Europa, ¿no? Por eso hay algunas casas como la, la tienda de Carolina Herrera, entre otras casas muy tradicionales. What do you say? Your name is Jose? My name is Jorge. Jorge, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, we got our second new guide here. Uh, Jorge is going to help us out and uh, take us on up for the view. So we are going to visit the best viewpoint of the city that is called Monserrate. It's the highest mountain in front of Bogota. Uh, the difference in altitude from the city and the highest part of the, of the mountain is about 500 meters. Wow. Uh, it's the same altitude that, than Cusco in Peru. So if you have problems with the high altitude parts, be careful. They are going to walk slow. So we are, we are in Monterrey Mountain. Awesome, thank you. So he was talking about Cusco. Uh, the first time I went to Cusco, I wasn't aware of alt altitude sickness or if I would be susceptible to it. So uh, I definitely was. And uh, the coca tea helped a ton. They have pills too, which you can get with also the coca tea. Um, it, it works really well. So we had some uh, last night and this morning. Uh, I think we'll be good. All right, so we're gonna take a cable car up to the top and uh, Teleferico? Is that the uh, name yes, in Spanish? Spanish? The name is Teleferico. <laughs> All right, so when we were in Santiago, we didn't have a chance to do this. So uh, this is our opportunity to do a Teleferico or a cable car. All right, it's our turn. City in another park, okay. uh, really close to the shore. So just follow me. That tree in English is probably called the trumpet tree. In Spanish, we call that tree like the um, trumpet tree. Uh, in Spanish, it's borrachero. So, that, with that tree, uh, with the flowers, they extract a particular molecule uh, to create a drug that can disturb your mind. So, when the Spanish arrive to the territory, uh, the local persons, the Indian persons, call it the Muisca town, the Muisca culture. They use that uh, beverage, that the beverage created with the flowers of the plant, to put in a uh, mental problems the Spanish uh, persons because it can it can put you in a crazy state. So it, it was like a, a plant weapon. So, for example, when some persons wants to tell you something, uh, they put that drug, that molecule in your beverage, and when you drink it and you don't see when when a person put it in your uh, liquor, in your water, in your beverage, when you drink it, you lose your mind and they can solve you everything. But it's not too common, but some persons do that. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely feeling the altitude. This is a city of about 10 million persons. Uh, so look, it's full of mountains every, everywhere. Unfortunately, it's so cloudy. So this is the west part of the city. The persons who have more money, who habits the old part of Bogota in that moment, decides to go to the north part of Bogota. The north part of the city is the north, is the part for the rich persons, for the persons who have more money 
look the difference between a really big city and the great mountains, <laughs> the green mountains. It's really beautiful. In that part, probably this is the best things that I can that I can I can tell you about my city. That is the city of about 10 million persons. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to visit the Montserrat uh, Church. Uh, it doesn't. It's very old because it just has 100 years of history. Before that, there, there, the Spanish person in the colonial per per period, they built a small church dedicated to the Montserrat Holy Mary. That is the same Holy Mary of Barcelona, Spain. Come on, follow me to visit the church. So, probably on Sundays in Bogota, this is the most important church to visit. A lot of persons believe that that religious figure there, that is called the Fallen Jesus, creates miracles to the miracles to the person. So that's the reason. Right now on Sunday, do you see a lot of persons here? So this is the Fallen Jesus statue, uh, and some persons in Bogota they believe that the uh, hair of Jesus is still growing. So, the principal press of the church, he needs to cut the hair <laughs> to Jesus. But it's just a thing that the persons, some persons in Bogota believe. So, okay, come on. So, come on, follow me for a coca tea. <laughs> So you can see a lot of products that represents very well the Colombian culture. <laughs> and if you watch our videos, you know that Leslie loves the shopping. <laughs> okay, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Hello. So the coca plants are very important for all the cultures of the Andean mountains. It's a really important food, for example, uh, it's full of proteins, also it, it acts like an uh, energy food, so it's really important for us. And our local liquor that in, in Peru is the pisco, in Mexico is the tequila, but in Colombia is this is one called the aguardiente. It's, it's really hard, we say the first with water, the second with water, the third like water. <laughs> In español, how do you say it? El primero con agua, el segundo sin agua, el tercero como agua. <laughs> el guaro. Sí, ¿Tú pruebas eso? ¿Tú pruebas? ¿Y qué piensas? Es muy fuerte. <laughs> Gracias. All right, I'm going to try this beer. See how it is. Premium local Club beer. Colombia. Uh -huh. <laughs> Suigo. Me gusta. I like it. Les, terminate tu té? Si. Sí. Sí? She finished her tea. So, this is the part of the local restaurants. Oh, Here nice. You are going to see the major part of the local food of Bogota. The yellow Potato is our local potato in Bogota. We call it the Papa Criolla. So this is the most common local food. It's, it's really fried, so we call that kind of restaurants like the Cholesterol Palace, or Palacio de Colesterol in Spanish. It's full of sausage, uh, blood sausage, plantain, the sweet plantain. Ah, but in Colombia we prefer yeah. to do that. Look, it has cheese and bocadillo. Un plátano, un plátano con queso y bocadillo. Sí, sí. Como para llevar. En todos los lugares que yo voy siempre ando buscando el plátano. Pero con queso yo me imagino que debe ser buenazo. Vamos a por más. Este es de paisa. 
principal uh, that looks principal good. play <laughs> of the, the Medellin City in Colombia. Enjoy it. <laughs> I know this, is, this, is, this is unique. <laughs> if I need to describe Colombia in two words, I must to say that is green and mountains. This is Colombia. <laughs> this is the, the, the landscape that you can see in all the country. Now that house that you see there is called the Santa Clara restaurant. It's a restaurant of local food of Colombia. So if you want to take a romantic din diner in the night, you can go there and it's a really good experience. Okay, Jorge, ¿dónde vamos ahorita? So now we are going to visit some streets of the old neighborhood of Bogota that is called the um, Candelaria neighborhood. It has more than 500 years of history. Uh, and after that, uh, we are going to visit the gold mission that is the principal mission of Bogota related with objects created by our ancestors. A lot of Indian cultures who habit Colombia from the north to the south. So Jorge, uh, you were talking a little bit about the safety of Bogota and saying that it's pretty safe. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, Colombia in general and the safety for foreigners and uh, for travelers? Now, I think that Bogota is a really safe uh, city to visit. Of course, like in all the cities of the world, you can find some dangerous neighborhood, but it's it's impossible to visit that kind of neighborhood. Just if you want that, even the local persons don't walk in that part of the city. So uh, now I think that is the best moment to visit Colombia because we have a violence problem a lot of years ago, but probably 15 years ago, it, uh, it disappears. And now it's really, really safe to travel all Colombia even not, not just the city, also the countryside, uh, small towns like San Agustin, Barichara, Villa de Leyva, all the country is really safe. So don't worry about that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, yeah, we we're just kind of curious on, on the safety because you know you do watch videos on YouTube and, and people talk about the safety. I, I think a lot of the feedback uh, from certain videos that I've watched at least, um, they talk about you know Colombia not being as safe as maybe as it was say 10 years ago or five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it, it has a lot to do with what the people are doing, where they're going, what they're into. Um, you know, Colombia has its, its vices just like a lot of countries do. Uh, so if you're into those vices, uh, whatever they may be, those could impact uh, the safety for you. Yeah, my, my viewers are gonna wanna know because you know, the first thing people ask when, when they're not familiar with South America or, or Colombia specifically, um, oh wow, is it safe to go there? And you know, I've had people when I was traveling in, in Santiago and on the cruise, um, they, they asked me, what do you think one of the more underrated uh, places to go are? And, and I said, from what I've heard, Colombia, you know, you have such beautiful uh, terrain and, and geography and um, the people are, are very, very nice and very welcoming. Some of the friendliest people in, in South America I hear. And uh, I was surprised too, when you're talking about the weather, um, this is pretty much the temperature year round. So it's mild, it's not super hot, it gets a little bit of warmth, um, but not 20 for- 20 degrees, 20 centigrade degrees. Okay. Always. And, and I imagine you never have snow, right? No, of no. course. There is no seasons, or probably just two seasons, dry season and wet season. That's it. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're on to our next, uh, our next stop. Uh, stop two of three today. I want to take a quick second to thank our sponsor, Cruiser Travels. Cruiser Travels makes trips like this possible with discounted group rates, exclusive perks, only provided by Cruiser Travels, knowledgeable and service-focused agents committed to sourcing the best deals in the industry. They won't be beat. Tell them Travel Vita sent you for an extra gift. The link is in the description below. Uh, <laughs> I like it. This is the biggest library of Colombia. This one is called Biblioteca Luis Angel Arango. It's the biggest one. This hand is the only object that you can take in the Botero Museum. It was created by the Maestro Fernando Botero, who is the, probably he was the principal artist 
of Colombia uh, in that century. So come on. So Fernando Botero donates a lot of pictures created by the principal artists of Europe uh, to Colombia and that's the reason why that mission exists. So by example, there, here we can see pictures of the Impressionist art movement created in Paris. So by example, is here we can see a picture of Renoir. Of course, pictures of Pablo Picasso, a bullfight. So, come and follow me, please. Okay, look the house. The house is, it was the house of the principal leader of the Catholic religion in the colonial period. Uh, now is the Botero Mission. Uh, so look, it looks really similar like the gardens of a house in Granada, España. It's the same type of architecture. Okay, so here we are going to see probably the, the most um, important picture of Botero. It's not the most important, but it's, it's really beautiful for me because it's, uh, it's a representation of the Yoconda or the Mona Lisa. But, uh, uh -huh, but we call it the Andean Mona Lisa because look, the mountains, the mountains are the volcanoes behind the Mona Lisa. This is called the study, but uh, for me it's like the Botero selfie, because look, he was Fernando Botero. Perdona. Look, in that picture, even the bananas, he manipules the volume of the banana to create it. And here, uh, there is another really important picture of Botero that is called the family. So look, the snake, and the, in the top, the snake, and in the bottom of the picture, there is the bite apple, the bite apple. So, uh -huh. so it represents like the original scene. And the original scene is the origin of the family, like the Bible history, you know? Ok, estamos aquí en la zona colonial de Bogotá, eh, un lugar que tiene como 500 años, ¿verdad? Está muy bonito, muy, muy uh, pintoresco, muy cultural. Hasta ahora me encanta, <ríe> me encanta Bogotá. ¿Son rico? For me, it's delicious. I love it. ¿Sí? Yeah? Yes. ¿Cuánto cuesta, amigo? 10,000 pesos. 10 mil es muy caro, ¿no? Because it's really difficult to extract the ants. It's not easy. So that's the reason. Yeah, for pequeño. The price. All right, 10 mil. 10 mil. Very salty. Uh -huh. Not bad. Quieres probar? Come on, let's. With a beer. Yeah. All right. Later on, when she has some drinks, we'll let her try it. So have you tried ayahuasca yourself? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> and what do you think of ayahuasca? Oh, it can change the life of a person. It's a really beautiful experience. Les, do you want to try ayahuasca? No. No? <laughs> I think I would in the right circumstance, but I also am a little bit skeptical. And here is the, is the biggest church of Colombia that is called the Catedral Primada of Colombia. And also close to that church is the Vatican Embassy in Colombia. And this is the Bolivar Square, that is the principal square of Colombia related with the governmental buildings in Colombia. Ok, 
Okay, so this is the Bolivar Square. So remember that Simon Bolivar for the North South American countries is the principal leader of the independency. Here we can find the principal buildings related with the government. By example, this building is called, this is the capital of Colombia. Uh, behind that building is the house of the president that is called the Nariño House. This is the Catedral Primada, the biggest church of Colombia, probably, this one. Uh, and some person tries to throw uh, uh, paints uh, or bad things to the building, so they decide to protect the building with that uh, black uh, curtains. This is a sugar cane uh, car, so if you want to use created just with sugar cane, they extract the juice and this is a good drink to the hot days. <laughs> This is called the Septima Street. The, Se the Septima Street is the most important street of Bogota, related with the local tourism. So on weekends, the families came here just to walk with their child, uh, take a lunch here a desert. So now we are in the Santander Square. Santander was the second president of Colombia. He also helps to Simón Bolívar to create a, a free country. Uh, and we say that Santander was the man of the laws and the money. So he creates the first laws of Colombia and he also creates the taxes system of Colombia. And now we're at the, uh, the Museum of Gold. So you want to tell us a little bit about the museum? Yes, that, in that mission we are going to explore the history of Araguar ancestors who creates a lot of objects uh, that represents the nature, the spiritual things, the shaman's culture. There is an statue related with uh, a, a goldsmith who have two tools to create uh, objects that we are going to see here. Okay, so this is the room related with the techniques that our ancestors used to create all the objects. In the beginning of the of that visit, we see uh, that seashell created with gold ships. Here, we can see uh, how they extract the metals. They don't have mines. They just extract the four principal metals from the rivers. So in Colombia, we produce the four principal uh, metals like silver, platinum, copper, and gold. And of course, the platinum is the most expensive metal, but also they find platinum in the rivers of Colombia. The second technique is called an embossing. So they create patrons in the, me in the metal in the metals to represent some particular things. The power of the light. Uh, the purpose to use metal to create objects is because for the Indian person it doesn't represent like us, uh, like money and power. It represents like the this is a gift of the god of the sun to the humanity to create tributes to connect with the other spirits of the nature. Here we are going to see some expensive objects. It's really safe. Uh huh. It's like a bank. <laughs> So, representations of jaguars. The jaguar is a really important animal for uh, the, our ancestors from Mexico to Argentina because the jaguar represents like the warrior. The jaguar represents everything, uh, the, the force, the strong things. That object represents a connection between a man and a bat. 
Guayabat because the sham when the shamans takes the ayahuasca experience by example they can feel connected with the spirit of some animals in this case that shaman was connected with the spirit of a bat probably this is the whole representation of batman <laughs> but it was a shaman <laughs> this is a emerald a really big emerald and it's probably one of the biggest emerald of the world the big emerald of the world is called Puratena and it's in another mission but this is in the top five of the biggest emeralds of the world it doesn't have a price and look that objects so it represents a ceremonial uh, object used by a warrior image a man using that objects in the middle of the uh, of a sunny day so the sun reflects in the object and it represents that he is like a representation of the god of the sun. Finally, uh, I need to tell you about the Dorado legend. The Dorado legend in Colombia uh, have two histories. The first one is the history created by the Spanish persons. So uh, when the Spanish warriors arrived to the territory, they hear that here in Bogota they are going to find a lot of um, gold emeralds. They do something that I want to show you here when I start this. But the Indian persons also create an object called the gold chip that is probably the most important piece of the mission that represents the Indian, the new Indian leader, uh, the Muiscan leader. Um, in the gold chip, uh, in the particular ceremony, so he's going to throw all the gold objects to the lake. How do, we, uh, how do we have somebody book a tour with you and your company? Okay, for me particularly, is my name is Jorge Perez and I work for a really good company, uh, or a tourist company called Hansa Tours. So remember, look for Hansa Tours, best in trip advisor for <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> awesome. We'll also put it in the, uh, the description of our video. So when we post the, the Bogota okay. video, we'll put it in the description. I appreciate that. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, remember, man. You did a great job. Two things. <laughs> She's so happy. She convinced the tour guide to let us come over here to this famous house. Where are we going, Les? Let's got an artisanal beer. Te gusta? Mi turno. <laughs> My turn. Muy dulce, no? I'm gonna try my drink. Uh, I don't even remember what the name was. 
So it was a recommended typical Colombian uh, cocktail. I'm gonna give it a shot. Please try. Alright, one time. Cheers. Very good. I think you'll like it too. Okay. It's kind of like a rum drink with, with maracuya. With passion fruit. Interesante. You have to try it. Okay. And now it's Leslie's turn. <laughs> Hola. All right. Good. Yeah, see this? Yes. Cheers. This is me. Ah, this is me. Yeah. All right. I got an empanada. And what else? What else do you need? Patacones with queso and crema deshilachada. Ah, qué rico. Deshilachada. All right. So these are just our starters, our orders, but. Um, this was really, really good. Really great meat. Fried, fried platano with uh, cheese. Can't go wrong. All right, we got frijoles, beans. We got sausage, quesos de chicharron. All right. Y esto? Arepa. Arepa. Todo esto es lo más popular de Colombia. Vamos a parar. Let's try it. What do I think of the comida? What do I think of the food? Uh, it was really good. Um, we needed some help because the, the menu was just like a big book. But uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, the the first dish that we had, the one that you ordered, uh, what was the name of that? Por el primer plato? Uh, patacones con queso y carne uh, desmechada. Yeah, it was really good. I don't know what kind of cheese that they use for that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the the waiter, amigo, what do you consult that? Queso arriba de nuestro primero plato. ¿Qué tipo de queso es? Mozzarella. Es solo mozzarella. Ah, okay. Muy rico sabor. Yeah. So they had the the squish uh, plantain fried, and then they had I guess it was just mozzarella, but it, it tasted very good. I had a an, a small empanada with uh, carne, really good, small, and then Leslie. Uh, Tú pides otro plato, uh, tercero, ¿qué es? Eh, pedimos, yo pedí la bandeja paisa, que es el plato más popular de Medellín y de Colombia, obviamente. Incluía eh, frijoles, salchicha, arroz, aguacate, eh, chicharrón como frito y también eh, carne eh, muy como tostada, carne tostada, pero muy, muy delicioso y frijoles. Muy yeah, it was really good. So... And they even had like this uh, ground up powdered meat where you're supposed to put it in the, the beans. And the beans weren't your typical beans. It was almost like a like a soup with a little bit of a tomato flavor. And uh, we were supposed to put the dried, uh, shredded, uh, like almost like a dusting of meat into there. But we didn't do that. Uh, you know, we're new. But overall, really good food. Um, we had a couple drinks and it was definitely really good too. So overall, Definitely give this place a thumbs up. Um, you know, I would say probably check out the Instagram page. You can find it. Les, what is the name of this place? Andres DC, no? Yeah. Andres DC. So you can find them in Instagram. Um, they have a lot of like events here, a lot of live music. And uh, this again was recommended by, by Jorge, our, our tour guide, our, our guia today. Try any other one. Here's our final bill. 294,000 pesos. 53. That's probably gonna be about $75. A couple drinks a piece. Tried uh, various uh, food. So there you have it, folks. So, Zona Te is where we're staying. This is where we are right now. And uh, yeah, this is the, the nicer part of Bogota. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of nice neighborhoods, but this is one of the better neighborhoods. So, uh, you can expect prices to kind of correlate with that. Um, obviously, you know, paying $75 for a meal, a couple drinks of bees. Um, we had probably three different uh, types of food. Um, we would expect to, to pay a little bit less. 
especially if you go other parts of, of Bogota. Um, but you know, overall, really great experience. Really liked it, and uh, the food and the drinks were delicious. Travel Vita fam. Today we are going to an amazing place. Uh, this is a church, Cathedral Sal. It is underneath 180 meters of a salt mine. So this should be pretty cool. Um, really excited for this. Leslie, are you ready? Ready. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Thomas. I'm a tour guide in Bogota and today we're visiting the Salt Cathedral of Sipaquira. Out of the city, one hour away from here, and one of the best places to visit in Bogota where you're traveling to in Colombia. Okay, so right now we're in Bogota. So um, one of the characteristics of Bogota is that always when you see mountains in this city, it's gonna be the east. So in this moment, we're heading north uh, to leave the city and go to Sipaquira, that it's our destiny. Sipaquira is an ancient town because it was an indigenous town. Actually, uh, the center of the salt uh, by the indigenous people who used to live here before the Spanish conquest that were the Muisca people. So um, it's one hour away from Bogota. Once we take the exit of Bogota, we're going to cross the province of Cundinamarca and then we're going to reach Sipaquira and the salt mine is going to be inside. So salt mine is considered the first wonder of Colombia. It was a cathedral that was built there in the last uh, century and um, it's a cathedral that they built inside of the salt mine 600 feet underneath. Okay, so we're crossing a town called Chia. Chia is a town that so many students uh, live here because there are so many universities around. University like La Sabana, the military university, or uh, the University Manuela Beltran, okay? So it's a town, it's a town that has a, a very young population, and then now we're ready for the next, next town that is, is going to be Sipaquira, our, our destiny. Okay, so we just arrived to Sipaquira Sol Cathedral. It's a cathedral that was built uh, in 1981 has a religious topic because it's uh, the faith of the miners the reason to have a cathedral here. Colombian society is very Catholic and that's why the miners uh, with uh, a company called Garavito Pearl they built uh, the Sol Cathedral 600 feet underneath from the top of the mountain and in the map uh, we can see that the cathedral is split in three sections. On the top of the square would be the cathedral the highlight of the place and below the square uh, are uh, the shopping areas, which is the third section of the mine. Okay, so all the salt of the world comes from the sea. What happened here? We are in the eastern mountain range of Colombia, part of the Andes, and this mountain range was, was formed by sediments. In that way, we have the salt right here, but actually the salt of salt mines appears dark because it's mixed with other minerals like cold, dolomite, pyrite, and here the water filters the salt, creating this effect of salt more like purified, so it's naturally purified, all right? So you said this is going to be one kilometer? It's one kilometer walking down and one kilometer coming out. The arc system uh, allows to the miners extract more material and go deep in the mountain. So that's why we have those sinkholes. And with this type of architecture, you can mine in different floors of the mountain. All right. Here we are in the station of the Passion of Jesus Christ when Jesus carried the cross. So everything here is pretty symbolic because here we see a cross that is hanged by a rock and that in this case is represented by Jesus Christ. All right. In this sinkhole, the third uh, station, we can see a lower cross that represents the first fall of Jesus Christ. They used to put 
um, explosives on the sides. Then they used to remove the big rocks of salt and they used to load the rocks here in this hole to take it out of the mine. All right. All right. So now we can discuss something. Is this a religious place? Officially not. This place has a, doesn't have any recognition by the Vatican. It's just for the faith of the miners that this place is a religious place. So people come here with a lot of devotion, but officially it's not. Walls are darker. It's because there is some cold. Uh, when the walls uh, when the walls are more white, it's uh, because there is more calcite. So there is a mixture of different minerals, but actually salt is the most important. All right. So this is the official entrance of the cathedral, the second section of the place. So here, with this cupola, um, cupolas always represents in Catholic churches the heaven. But here, when they've carved and polished the top, they uh, basically uh, discovered that the cupola had so many similarities with the universe and its constellations. Okay, so this spot is the choir. That's the main navi of the cathedral. And here in this spot called the choir is the place where usually the nuns sings during the mass or someone plays the organ. In this place, we can see the Archangel Gabriel, okay? That uh, is the playing, it's playing the trumpet uh, for the annunciation of uh, the mass. And here uh, we can see the crosses that is the largest cross underneath of the world. We can see how massive the walls has been carved and uh, we can see the main altar from here. In a few minutes, we're gonna be down there. Right now, we're 600 feet underneath from the top of the mountain. This is the place and the lowest place that the visitors can be in the mine. In this hall, we see other Madonnas that are donations by different embassies and people around. Central Navi represents the life of Jesus Christ. That's why here they always do the Mass. From the floor to the top there are 20 meters and from each side to side there are 10 meters. So the fact is that was made by Rodriguez Arango and Ga Garcia Corredor and both um, built this sculpture that uh, for example has, a big has two big differences with the original one. The original one Adan is not touching God. Here he is. And second, in the original one, uh, God has face, and here there is no face for God. What do we have here? A representation of an emerald mine. Colombian emeralds are the most high quality emeralds of the world because uh, when at the time of its formation, uh, it was related with water. Uh, there are different towns where they um, mine the emeralds, but actually the most important and uh, well-known town is called Muzo uh, in Boyacá department of Colombia. So here, we have a little representation of that town that is called Muzo with a full bullfight ring, some colonial houses because actually Muzo was a town, a pre-Hispanic town of the indigenous with the same name, the Muzos, that they were the first people that used to trade with emeralds. Here we have another sculpture, but this sculpture was made by the artist Carlos Penagos and what he did here was carving the whole wall, representing an indigenous giving an offering to the nature saying thank for the resources that they receive. Okay, so over here we have this mirror. So that's water and when the water has high concentrations of salt, changes density and has the effect as well that it's very deep, but actually it's just 10 centimeters. So which is very special and incredible, something that we have here in this mine. So 
Tomas, where are we going now? So now we're going to the main square of the town. It's a, uh, it's a colonial town that was uh, built in 1600s. Um, so we will see the colonial houses and the government buildings of the town. Awesome. Yeah, and we got uh, some nice panoramic views uh, with my drone. So uh, you guys are going to get a chance to see some of the some of the town from a, a higher altitude. So where are we, Thomas? So we are in the oldest restaurant of Colombia, La Puerta Falsa, from 1816. Wow. Uh, it's popular and uh, was popularized abroad because Anthony Bourdain ate here and he recommended it. Oh, he did, huh? Oh, wow. Awesome. So I think I'm going to have tamal, which I've had before, but it'll be interesting to have uh, tamal from this region and from Colombia. And um, you can have it for breakfast or lunch, Tomas was saying. Um, this is going to be a big plate, he said. So. I'm psyched, I'm hungry. Uh, it's about 2 p.m., is it? So, yeah, I'm gonna try tamal and, and see how it goes. Here we go. This tamal is huge. <laughs> I've never seen one this big before. Well, we're gonna dig in. All right, so that was one of the best tamals that I've ever had. It was gigantic, but I managed to eat every bit of it. and. I, Honestly, probably jump into a second one. But uh, that being said, this is very different than, than tamal we've had in other countries. Uh, obviously, we tried in you know, Mexico and we tried in Peru and uh, even in the United States, um, we have had uh, tamal. But uh, this is very good. Uh, they actually put a full uh, chicken wing, or excuse me, a chicken leg, uh, right inside and they bake it right inside. So um, very interesting, great, great flavor, um, delicious. So highly recommended. Can see why uh, famous uh, chefs have come here to check it out. Okay, here we are in the main square of Sipaquira. So, this is related with the Spanish urbanism, which the center is the center of power. Imagine like a chessboard with the center. It's the center of power that the powerful people used to live here, and if you live closer, you were more wealthy or you had more political representation. So here we can see in front the religious power as well with the cathedral of the town, but on the right side of the cathedral of the town is the town hall. On the other hand, these towns used to be the fruit markets in the colonial times, and in the center there was a fountain that used to provide the water to the citizens around. All right? And that's a wrap on this video. Bogota, Colombia is definitely one of the South America's best destinations. We were blown away by all the delicious food, like the banana with cheese, the biggest tamal I've ever seen, and the surprisingly tasty big ass ant. Let me know in the comments if you dare to try one of these. We also enjoyed stunning views from Monte Sorante Mountain, and our drone footage captured the beauty of the city. Plus, we learned a lot about Colombian culture and history at the Museum of Golden Plaza del Minero. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more adventures. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy travels.